Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to do something fun in ZBrush. We are going to be creating a alien ship of some sort. Uh, here's a couple examples right now on the screen of uh, some previous ones I've done in the past week or two. And we'll be using the Griebel elements like I went over with in the one of my previous videos. And basically, we're going to just design a low-poly uh, spaceship whatever style uh, design that you want. I mean it's all these models you see here they may look super complex but in reality it's not that complex. Uh, it's basically the texture that's driving all the features on the ship itself. So uh, each, each, uh, each one of these ships file size wise uh, within ZBrush is probably only it's probably under 5 megabytes. I mean it's it's itty bitty. Uh, you can we can render true geometry if we wanted to and I'll show you how to do that and how to make uh, those textures into actual geometry. So without further ado me quit talking here and we will go straight into ZBrush and start working okay? Alright, so here we are in ZBrush. Uh, gonna go ahead and switch over to just the basic material. And go up to your document. And we're gonna change the size. We're gonna make a 1K texture. So let's change it to 1024 by 1024. And then resize. And we're gonna zoom out. There we go. So we can see the whole canvas. Now go ahead and load up that uh, Griebel elements and it's just a it's just a a tool with uh, multiple sub tools that you can play with if you're not familiar with it and Griebel elements alright so we're gonna go ahead and drag it and draw it on the canvas use shift to constrain it to lock it into orientation for us and it's got multiple sub tools as some of you are already aware, we can open it up and you can see all the different sub tools. So you can hit N and it'll bring up your uh, sub tool. All of them, it's like a quick select and I like using it this way myself. So we'll go ahead and close that up. Uh, switch it over to solo because we're going to be doing just one at a time here. And basically we're going to draw out our we're going to draw out our texture that we're going to use to help uh, create the ship's details. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's find a panel that we want to start with here. Uh, I'm going to take like this plate 6. And in uh, the Griebel Elements uh, tutorial I did show you that each one of these have a mask built into it so you can actually add a surface noise to it. So if you click on noise uh, it's this one doesn't have noise built uh, set up for it already, so you have to open up an alpha. And let me find one of my one of my older Griebel textures that I did using the generator, and you can go uh, take a look at that too. It's a, another handy tool. We're gonna flip H on there. We're gonna reduce the basic noise down to zero change the strength to the positive and there we go we've added more detail to this one panel so and you can scale it down if you want or you can scale it up it's your preference so I'm happy with that so we can now start making our new texture here so we just want to drop him down here and there across the palette across the canvas and just do shift s and that takes a snapshot of it and say like I want to offset him a bit. I can actually flip him around if I wanted. And then say like I want to put him just above this one. In the previous video I showed you that you can go into uh, your deformation. But I forgot that uh, there's a mask built into this. So it's not going to move the whole object. So I uh, found another quick way to do it. <clears throat> if you take it out of edit mode and you hit W, it moves it to the Move tool, and this is the older gimbal uh, when you're using 2.5D, and then just not clicking on the gimbal, just drag up or down, and you can move them above and below the object. 
So it's quick and easy. And then you just do T. Whoops. Make sure you uh, do a snapshot first. So T W. See, it's all right. We we like these little mistakes because this way you can learn from my mistakes. All right. So I took a snapshot of it there with the Shift S. You can go back to edit now, and you can move him off, and we can change him to something else. We can go to, say, like this little guy here. We can scale him down a little bit. Do a Shift S. Maybe drop another one over here. Shift S. Let's change our panel. Let's get our little piano keys in here. We're going to scale him up because they make great textures. They really add a lot to it. So we'll drop him right there. Let's see where he is height wise. Uh, so let's do T, W. We can put him just below if we wanted. And I think if I, there we go. We can even drag and move him if we needed to. So if we want to tuck him under there, we can do that. And then Shift S and then go back to edit. Drop another one somewhere else. We can scale him down if we wanted. We can actually flip him and put him going on the horizontal there. Shift S. And let's see. Let's go ahead and pick a, another panel. Pick this one here. Move him out here. Scale him up. And you see he's got a little uh, surface noise in there. We can actually click that. We can go in and we can scale the alpha up or down. Or if you want it, you could do, yeah. Yeah, we'll just stick with that. There we go. So totally customizable. You can add your own uh, sub tools to this and then save it out. Whatever you want to do. It's entirely up to you. So Shift S, and we're going to do the gonna flip him around. There we go. Move him up. We'll join these two together there. So Shift S. All right. So now let's go out of edit mode. And if you click and hold your tilde key, which is that little squiggly line, it's probably right next to the one button on most keyboards. You can push and hold and drag. And see, everything is all it's all seamless tile, which, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and drag and draw back into our canvas skin. Hit T to edit. So now we can pick a subtool we want. We want to fill in the gap a little bit, connect up all these little panels. And we'll do that with the, with the two different pipes that I have in here. So. Shift S, all right. Flip him around, move him down, connect these two together. Uh, you can see we can see that we're having a little height issue there, so go ahead and do T W, and then we'll just drag him down just a little bit. So Shift S, and then go back to edit. As you can see, everything's just fine. All right, so sorry about that. I had to fix something real quick. And let's see. Let's go ahead and switch over. We'll switch over to the three pipes. He's had a lot, a lot to things here. And let's see. See how we want to connect everybody here. And we're not going to do it that way. Scale him up just a little bit. Yeah, that's not working. So let's uh, connect these two real quick. Be sure we don't go past the edge of the canvas there. So we'll scale him down so he fits a little better. And as you can see, we're having a little slight height issue there, which is fine. We want a different, 
we want different depth going on here so switch out of edit with T and then W and then we can drag till it looks just right and then shift S T back to edit with that one. Let's see, can connect him. Alright, another height problem there, no problem. T W and just drag him back just a hair. Shift S. And T back into edit. Flip him over. Go do the same thing on the other side. Go do T W. Drag him under. Okay, shift S. All right, so let's go back to draw. Let's use our tilde key again. Kind of move things around. Yeah, it looks like we got just about everybody connected there. So let's take up some of this negative space here and we will drag and draw again. T, N, and we'll take one of these little tech panels here. Kind of fill in some of the space. You can always take it out, edit, move it back into move tool there. You can raise or lower them, kind of get them overlapping on some of them. That's fine. So shift S. Back to edit mode, in, and we'll grab the tech 2. Maybe move him over here, and T, W, move him under some things. There we go. Shift S. Alright. So I think I'm okay with this. Let's uh, check on everything here. We got some crowded areas here. We got some kind of open areas here. And that's fine. That's what we want. So we'll just kind of center up here. Doesn't really matter. It's seamless. So it doesn't really matter where you plop down anything. It's all going to work out in the end. So, all right, so if you're happy with your placement, go ahead and go to your alpha palette, go down to transfer, and grab dock. There we go. We've made a depth pass that we need to generate our texture. So go ahead and export him out. Let me find my little spot real quick. Alright. And then we will make it a TIFF and then save them out. Okay, done. Go ahead and close up that one panel real quick. Preferences, initialize, and yes. All right, so let's start modeling. All right, change our material back to basic material. And this is going to be uh, just quick and simple uh, Z modeling here. I know some of you uh, aren't too familiar with it. I'm getting a little better at it. Uh, let's go ahead and start with a PolyMesh 3D. Drag them onto the canvas. T back into edit. And I want to start with, we're going to start with a cylinder. And I think seven, 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 and then cylinder, Q, Q cylinder on the Z. And let's see how that looks. Eh, let's go ahead and lower them to the five, five, five. All right. So, like I said, you don't need a heck of a lot of topology to make this work. All right, so we got a basic cylinder here. We're gonna just do. This is gonna be kind of like the the engine room. We're gonna make uh, the kind of cruiser ship that uh, you saw in the previous photos there, uh, the one that was kind of zipping out of the planet there. 
So we will start by just doing some basic, uh, I'm going to turn the symmetry on here, just do some transpose real quick. We'll shift to constrain it. There we go. Kind of thin them out just a little bit. And then we're going to turn them that way. And we're just using the move. We're not actually using scale. All right. And I may make them a little wider. Okay. There we go. So now let's make our little uh, engines that protrude out here. So let's go into our Z modeler and click on a polygon there. And we're already set up to do Q mesh single poly. And if you use Alt, create your temporary poly group. And then click and drag into that temporary poly group and then hit control. Alright. Now, if you go into your display properties, you can't see the back side of that because it's not showing double. So just display and double. And you may see me come down here every once in a while using my uh, UI here. These are all the tools that make my life so much easier and I don't have to dig through and find. Alright, so now we got our now we got our little engine cells out here. Let's go ahead and do change your Q mesh from single poly to polygroup all. And we're just gonna drag him out a little bit here. And then if you go into the move align no we don't want to align to axis not yet uh, if you do flat island it'll take any flat island over here and then if you watch there you go you make them larger smaller whatever you want to do so we're going to take the back of these guys here and I'm going to change it to scale same thing flat island scale them up a little bit kind of jets them out a little bit but that's kind of cool it's going to be a neat little look to it here and let's see I think I'm going to need a little more topology in here so let's go ahead uh, it's already set up for insert so we can actually do this and go to multiple edge loops and specify how many we want so say like we want you know three more edge loops and you can just click right there and it adds three more edge loops and then you click on there three more edge loops so this way we can attach everything together here so let's go ahead what we want to do I'm going to take one of these I'm going to change it to delete and we'll do the same thing like we did with the Q mesh there and we're going to designate a poly group by holding alt. So we did three there. And then I may go ahead and do that three there. Oops. Selected too many. And then select the corresponding amount on here. So if you selected six polygons, select six on there. It's just going to make the bridging a whole lot easier. You get a lot better results. So, and that's what we're going to do now. We're going to right click on the edge and we'll do bridge two holes and select one of them. Let me scale in here a little bit so you can see what's going on. So, bridge two holes, click first hole. Okay, we click the first hole and then just click the second hole. And there you go, it bridged them together. Nothing too extravagant. I didn't go. You can click and hold and uh, add more loops and stuff like that, but I'm not overly concerned on having a thousand different loops in there or any fancy angles or anything like that. So let's do something with this front edge here. We're going to go ahead and bevel it and set up to edge loop complete. So we're just going to bevel that front edge there. 
And then on the back of the engines here, I want to go ahead and yeah, let's go ahead and do inset and flat island again. And you want to make sure you have inset region or it's going to inset all the each individual polygons. All right. So now let's go ahead and go to click on your polygon again. And I'm doing right click to access the menu. You can also do spacebar and hold it if you want to do it that way. So uh Yeah, I guess we're okay on uh polygroup all for a Q mesh there. You always want to make sure you don't have uh, a polygroup somewhere else in here that's identical or it's going to Q mesh that as well. So keep an eye out for that. Because you may be looking at a small part of your model and you Q mesh something way over here and you don't notice it until you zoom out. So I've done that quite a few times. So always get into a habit of hitting Alt when you're doing Q mesh to create different different uh, polygroups. So let's do uh, insert and insert edge loop. And then we're going to specify just a one, and it's going to slap it dead center. That's where I want it. And let's see, I want to make eh, auto save. Got to love it. Uh, let's go ahead and split these two points here. We're going to give it a couple engines here. Split the point. Hit Alt real quick. Let's get a very unique color here. Yeah, that'll work. And then just click it. And it'll make an identical one there. And let's go. We're still set up on QMesh. And I know it's a unique polygroup. And we're just going to push him in. Just to give it a couple thrusters there. Alright, so we got our basic engine hole done. So let's start working on the front of the ship. What I want to do is go to Subtool. And you want to... Actually, first, let's go to Ring 3D. That's too much topology for us right now. First we want to align on X. So this way he'll line up with our model. And let's go ahead and just drop him to like 12, I think 24 will do. Okay. Make it a polymesh 3D. Go back to your original ship here. Subtool. Append. Append. And let's find the one that we just made. And it should be this one right there. Alright. So let's turn solo off so we can see what we're doing here. And go down to your ring 3D. And you can turn on your transparency here. He's obviously way too big for what I want. So let's go ahead and we're going to turn X symmetry on. We're going to move him real quick. Actually, let's go ahead and scale him. Safer that way. Drag that out a little bit. Okay. And let's go ahead and go back to the move. Click that little white part there. It'll align to the center selection. And scale in a bit. And it's not lining up. Hold on. Alright, fine. Do it this way. I'm not a master of transpose. Sorry, guys. Sometimes it works for me. Sometimes it doesn't. So, I just want to affect the X on the size. And I can just stretch them out there. There we go. Alright, now I'll go back to that move. This part I know works. If you hold down shift, it'll constrain it to the axis. And let me move him back just a little bit so he's kind of protruding into the other one. I'm not really going to try to join him or anything. End up getting a weird topology out of it. Alright, so. Now let's get our two subtools together here. Just go to your subtool menu, go back to the top one. 
and just do a merge down. It'll yell at you real quick. Yes. Don't get scared. It does change all the poly groups real fast, but everything's still maintained. All right, so let's go ahead and get like. So we got like the center section here, and we want to make the front of the ship here. So I'm going to do. Want to set up a couple poly groups real quick, and do it as a poly loop. And right there. There. I click him and just go to poly groups and want to do auto groups. Now they're separated. There we go. Now if I do the poly loop again. Poly loop, poly group. I think that'll help. Oops. If you click and hold. There we go. Alright, so now we've got a piece that we can go ahead and Q mesh out. Poly group all. Click and drag, hit Alt, give it a different polygroup, something very distinctive, and then hit Control. This way it separates it, because I want it separated. All right. So now let's do same thing again, but you don't need to separate it this time. Okay, let's see. What do I want to do now? Let's go ahead and QMesh one more time, but change the polygroup. Eh, cancel that. Okay, let's go ahead and do poly group again. Stay on there. Let's do single poly and we're going to define our poly groups that we want. So let's go ahead and go here. And you can click and drag and that's how I'm doing that. So let's go ahead and do Q mesh. I don't know why I did that. I could have just done it this way. Change that poly group and then control to separate him. Okay. Then Q mesh him again. Change him to poly group again. Alright, so change that to single and insert. And let's go back one step here. Let's go back to here. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do these outside edge here. Sorry guys, I keep on going back and forth here. My bad. Just kind of thinking about the design, overall design, so alter that, control it. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and I'm going to insert an edge here. There. And then go to your delete again. Where'd it go? There it is. And we'll do a poly loop. And it, 
you can see that little orange arrow is going to point which direction I want it gone. So, boom. All right, so now we got rid of those guys. So, let's go back to QMesh. We're going to QMesh that little panel we did there, and we just want to come out just a hair. Okay. Let's do a move. We don't want to do a flat island. We want to do polygroup all and align to axis. So it's going to either go X, Y, or Z. It's not going to go any other direction. Oops. It's moving the whole thing. Hold on. Oh, I got polygroup all. My bad. No? That's the way it should be. But let me. Oh, I see. Okay. Let me auto group and go under geometry real fast. Uh, mirror weld. There we go. Now everybody's on the same side. All right. Now let's try to do that again. There it goes. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Now I'm happy. Almost looks like a gun, but that's all right. Well, didn't realize I was making a gun for you guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and do. Want to go ahead and do hit B, S, and go to sl not slice curve. You want to actually B B. You want to do clip curve. There you go. Yes. And we just want to go ahead and I just want to slice him. That's it. Let's get everybody nice and flat right there. And go back to your Z modeler and go ahead and do insert multiple edge loops. And let's go ahead and raise it up to about eight. There we go. So now you can take, uh, now we can start doing some cool stuff with QMesh. Oops, Control Z. Want to do single polygon. Single poly, there we go. So, let's go ahead, QMesh, uh, poly loop flat, just make sure you're pointing in the right direction. frame off, kind of see what it looks like now. We can go back here, we can see if we could do that with our engine here, if it lets us. Yeah, it does. Nice. And we'll go ahead and add one. Just your simple basic Z model and tutorial here. All right, so let's go ahead and call that done. Okay, that's just your, basically you just want to explore shapes, you know, whatever, you see something on TV or something like that, see if you can design a Z modeler. And we're not looking for a high poly here because that texture we made earlier is going to help us out. So let's get ready for that. Okay, before we go into that, just show you a cool little thing that we could do real quick here. Get some of these 
cool little forms to shape a little different. Click on your move, go under your, let's see, under your brush, we'll want to do auto masking, and you can do mask by polygroup. And then also, if you go under your tool, not your tool, your transform, if you go under, do, 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 where is it, where is it, alright, There it is. If you go under your modifiers, under your transform. Ah, disregard that. Don't even worry about that. I was going to say, well, you, let's go ahead. So, say like, we just want to move in the X direction. Change your X, Y, Z, and then change it to just X. Watch what happens when I move that. As long as I'm on that point right there, it's only going to manipulate those two polygroups. And you see how it's only stretching in the X that's pretty cool. So I can thin these out a little bit. And if I want it, I can flare these out. Get some really cool, unique shapes there. Now it's looking more like a ship, less like a gun. That's cool. All right. All right, I'm done with that little presentation there. But you know, it gives you gives you some ideas. Let's turn mask by polygroups off. Go back to your transform and click on the modifiers. Make sure X Y Z, because if you forget about it, you'll start beating yourself in the head trying to figure out why something is not manipulated in the way it should. All right, so now let's go on to texturing. So let's go ahead and turn poly fill off, and I always advise to save your document every once in a while. So save as, and I'll just save as default, it's fine. Uh, food, food for thought, yeah, it will create a light box for you there, for you. Uh, if you ever, uh, if you're using this uh, Greeble element technique, especially when we're starting to add surface noise, uh, be careful saving your projects with undo history. Uh, there is a slight bug in ZBrush. Um, not sure about it. I'm fixing to turn it in here in the next couple days. Uh, submit a ticket for it. But for some reason, uh, if you start manipulating the surface noise with undo history, your file will not be able to open. It'll open, but then it'll crash. Yeah, it, it just will. It won't work anymore, and then you lost the file. So try not to save your undo history, or if you're doing construction piece of it, save that file separate, and then do your actual surface noise, which we're fixing to do here. Alright, so, now that I'm done rambling, let's continue on here. Uh, under your geometry here, I want you to change your dynamic subdivision, turn it on. So, we're going to go ahead and crank him up there. He looks awfully smooth, but I th it's going to work for us. And if you notice in the upper left-hand corner, it'll tell you how many polygons it's subdivided to. So 1.763 is great. But it'll only save it as a, you know, 1,800-point model, which is kind of cool. So that's how your file sizes are going to come in quite handy. It's going to be kind of nice. So let's go ahead and start with our first uh, surface noise here. So open up, go down to, should be right above your deformation there. Open up noise. And then all your controls in the, are on the corners here. Kind of center them up there. Uh, oops. He doesn't have any UVs. we got to fix that real quick. That's all right. That's quick and easy. You want to do go ahead 4096 one and create GUV for grouped UV tiles. There you go. And make sure under geometry real quick do modify mirror and weld on the X. So this way it'll be symmetrical on both sides. Lower that down there. All right. So back to our surface. Click on noise and see now our UV tab is activated. We click UV now. Don't see anything yet, that's fine. So let's go find our image that we did earlier with the agreeable elements. And a couple settings we got to fix uh, uh, flip H. 
and let's take the basic noise down and we can put the strength all the way up and then change your offset to negative 0 0.01 and there we go now we're getting our paneled effect but me I like to start small so let's go ahead I like to get some of those nice gnarly details on the outside of the ship that's what makes it look cool so let's go ahead and adjust our scale and just start dragging your scale down until you get some nice little pieces in there so click OK and now you can see we've got a very cool highly detailed model in no time if you click BPR the results are even better it'll actually project it out and make it look like a solid piece of geometry when in fact it not it really isn't the there isn't any uh, it's like a projection out so it's like a deformation it's, it's basically a displacement is what it is so you don't have any geometry at the back of those pieces of geometry right there if that makes any sense it's not solid but that's okay I'm okay with that so alright so we got our first one here so go to your sub tool and just click duplicate alright you can keep it on this one here uh, you don't need to change it if you don't want to and go ahead and go to deformation and do a negative 10 on deformation Oops. let's go ahead and turn solo off okay now we can see both the sub tools there and I'm going to kind of drag him over here, scale him down just a little bit. This way I can kind of see what areas are missing detail. So now we go back into our surface and then adjust our detail. And we can move stuff around. So we'll go with that. There we go. We filled in some of the voids there. That's great. And you can do another BPR and it'll render out both of those. Cool. Very cool. Alright, let's keep on going here. Let's create another one. Duplicate. And it's the same thing over and over and over again. I usually have about five or six of these embedded in there and then just another negative ten on the inflate there and go back to your surface edit now the only thing to remember as you're going up you get larger panels but because we got this relative uh, strength on here the further the displacement out will be so something that's even further in may still project past your original subtool your most upper subtool if that makes any sense so let's go ahead looks like I need something on the edges here so let's manipulate until I find something that might work there let's try that okay yeah that's filling up nicely go ahead and BPR it and it looks like it did project past that but it gave it a really gnarly look there and I like it I really do it's turning out really well so we'll go ahead and do another one and duplicate him deformation negative 10 and then go back to your surface and you don't need to if you didn't want to you can actually so let me solo this new one out 
if you wanted, you can actually manipulate the UVs on there. So you could do a flip U, and you can see how it moved it into other areas, and it flip V. So let me take Solo off and see if we're filling up. Yeah, it looks like we're filling up some of those little spots there. And we didn't even have to manipulate the the, the noise itself. All right, let's go ahead and do a BPR and see how we're looking. Very cool. And I like having all these uh, openings all over the place. It really adds a lot to it here when you start rendering it out, especially in Keyshot or other applications. You can throw a little light into the center here, and that light will project out in through all these little voids. And have you don't even have to design any windows into it because it designed itself a window. Very cool. I'm liking that. I don't even think I want any more, to be honest with you. Alright, so, okay, so we got our ship now. So, looking a little bland, color-wise. So, you can either do, you can either keep it by subtools, which is, which is fine. Uh, you can save this file out. It's not going to be, it's going to be pretty small. So let's go ahead, let me just save it out. Let's see how big it ends up becoming. So we'll just save, load. Yeah, it's less than two megabytes. How cool is that? That's not bad at all. But let's go back to uh, what I was talking about here. We can either, you can either do it uh, per subtool. So you can actually, let me just, uh, I'll change the color. Oh wait, let's turn on polypaint on everybody real quick before we start changing colors. There we go. Alright, so now let me change that color to a darker color and you can do fill object and you can see put all those nice black lines in there and we can skip one. Looks like it did it for me. Oh, that's weird. Let me get real dark here. Fill object. You do it like that. Let me BPR it out, see how it looks. Add some more contrast to your image there. You can just take the whole thing into Keyshot, which I'll do here. Keyshot. And then we'll send it over to Keyshot real fast. shot up and running here. And as you can see, it renders it out quite nicely. It does all the BPR to Geo. So it comes in as full geometry. Uh, let's go ahead and change things real fast. Environment, switch it to color, no ground shadows. There's no shadows. There's no ground shadows in space. Change it to black background. Uh, we could do, uh, see I've got some, get into a habit of, like I have, is I have like some favorite materials that I like to slap onto things. So, like I got this one here, I've also got this one 
here that I can add on to it. You know, if I wanted, I can add. I can add some coloring into it. Ugh, I don't like that one. That one doesn't look nice. Uh, see, and that's the neat thing about having these little layers in here. Let me find something for that last one. layer I gotta fix I think. If you're not sure you can go over to your materials here. Yeah, there's one more there. There we go. Quick and easy ship. Really didn't take long at all. So let me show you that little trick with the lights. Do uh, add geometry. Usually I'll just add a sphere. Position, move, scale them down. Just make them itty bitty there. Just big enough to get into things. Put him down in the center here. This is usually where the magic happens. So let's uh, mess with his material. Give him like a burnt orange. And then make it as area light diffuse. Not visible to camera. And we'll crank up the wattage. 100. Ah. Yeah, let's see. He's right in between that guy. So let's go ahead and just. He's not actually in the other ones here. So. Go ahead and scale them up just a bit until he starts projecting inside the other one. There he goes. And then move and move him up a little bit. So he's easier to see. There we go. Now we can start seeing it. So I can get a red orange against another orange. It's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in. And see, now you got all this light leaking out. Let me change that. You can add more. Just duplicate. Just move your sphere around. Put them in back into things. And he's a little large. No, he's not that big. Just scale him down. Make sure he's inside it. And then, of course, you don't forget, you can get a lot more out of an image if you change the, the background. If you do Control and then Shift, you can rotate things around, get some better highlights. Also adjust the contrast of things. Make things a little, a little more. Make your uh, lights and darks pop a little bit more. Also change the height. Bring like some of the highlights down, or you can br push them up. And not size. Or 
pick something with a different color, a lot of different colors to it. It's more of a neutral color there. Let's do Possibilities are quite endless here. And we managed to get all this done in less than an hour. It's not bad. So, and you can always, inside ZBrush, you can actually um, take these models here. Let me solo him out. You can make that into actual geometry if you wanted. Like I said, go into your geometry tab open up your dynamic hit apply first and then BPR to geo usually takes a uh, 10 15 seconds there and you go to your other tool apply BPR to geo this is basically what uh, ZBrush did sending it to Keyshot it just uh, BPR would everything to it Then you can manipul manipulate things more, you know, move things around. Uh, you can decimate this model down, you know, to get it to about a half a million polygons and uh, send it to some animation software. Or if you're lucky enough and you have uh, Keyshot Pro, you can, with animation, you can do it that way too. So possibility is quite endless here, people, and definitely want to see your designs. Uh, uh, definitely get with me on Facebook, Google Plus, ZBrush Central. Uh, I really want to see people's results. Uh, spread the word about this technique. It's really cool. It's easy. You get so much detail off of this stuff. It's it's incredible. Look at that. Less than an hour, we created this super complex ship here and you know and just started from a, a low poly cage and ended up with with such complexity someone would think you spent you know a week or two modeling this thing nope took me an hour you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time okay